Hello everyone, Attack Power here with another strike team game between me and Protoss here on Tannenberg. Let's dive right in here with I am playing 7th Desert Rats on Balanced Income and Protoss is playing 16th Luftwaffe on V for Victory. So, it's two interesting divisions. I personally really didn't want to play 16th Luftwaffe. I think it's kind of a trash division. Uh, 10v10, certainly, but uh, for 1v1, basically garbage. Uh, so I was really happy when he was like, I want to try this out. And I was like, yeah, I want to try 7th Desert Rat. This division seems pretty good to me. Um, so yeah, so I decided to cast this one instead so we can see both sides here. Uh, we're on Tannenberg again. I'm really enjoying this map. I feel like no one ever picks it because they don't like the lines of sight in the middle. I just don't really care. There's so much terrain, and it's actually like every division has a chance of being good in this map. I will note, too, I functioned under the assumption that he was playing 16th Luftwaffe. Uh, um, 91st Luflanda. Uh, I don't know why it was in my head that he was playing that. He never said it. I just, for some reason, just assumed it was that. So I thought I was only facing Stugs. Uh, so when this King Tiger he's immediately putting out uh, shows up, I'm, I like crap my pants. <laughs> so anyway, check it out. Uh, Protoss' deck here. So we have the Lufoff Fusiliers here. Nice 20 point infantry squads. They're, there's really nothing bad about them. You get great availability. So nice unit there. Then, of course, their infantry tab is basically all disheartened units all the way across. Lufoff Jaegers, uh, Lufoff Sturm Pioneers. Uh, the cool thing is the Leaders come with the discipline trait, which is really cool. We have the Luftwaffe Flock, uh, Flock Kampftruppe in here, and the L Luftwaffe, uh, Luftwaffe Jaeger MG34. The tank tab, of course, is the Königs Tigers, the King Tigers here with Knispel in B phase. Then we have the Stug 3 card and a Tiger card in C. The support tab, Flammenwerfers, the uh, police unit. We have these cool Flak Panzer Brens, which are actually really quite good. We'll see them on display here. Uh, the Commandant and Supply. Uh, AT tab here, Pack 38, Stug 3, F8, so you get a 17-pounder card, can only be brought in A, and a Pack 40 card. The A tab, really quite strong. You get these Flak 41 88s, which are really strong 88s. Uh, then Flak 43 and a Flak Verling, so great A tab. The RD tab, good stuff, because you get the 172 5s, the K18s, the Nebelwerf for 210s, which are really strong, and the FK, I'm not a big fan of the FK-288s, so I don't know why you take those, but uh, BF-109 Recon in the air tab. We have the BF-109 Bomber. Not a huge fan of those, but they can be effective at the beginning. Focke-Wolf 190 F8 with its cluster bombs for tanks, and finally a DO-217. On my side here, it's 7th Desert Rats. An interesting division. One thing you don't see on the cards, you can see on the Field Engineer card only, uh, they all have Battle Weary, which gives them a slight increase in suppression uh, damage that they take. Uh, so they essentially get suppressed a little faster. Nothing as bad as Dishearten, but definitely something to be aware of. But they also come with free veterancy. All the uh, infantry, at least, come with free veterancy. So the support tab here, you have the Scouts, which are actually really good. They're snipers. They're 20-point, like, 4- or 5-man sniper scout uh, with a machine gun. So that's really good. You can bring them double that and get 4 and eight like that's awesome uh you get two cards well there's multiple cards of cromwell forts here the krih which is a irish brigade uh then you have the stewart six here in the infantry tab i have the field engineers the rifles piot a and b we have assault engineers and b which is those these chunky basically riflemen with a flamer and then in c phase i'm bringing another card of those and the desert rats so yeah i actually moved the assault engineers to c phase taking that chance because i want lots of cqc the tank tab here we have cromwell fives lots of those fireflies i would have brought more fireflies if i had realized i was not playing 91st with Londa, but that's all right. We, we have a couple of fireflies to work with, and then just Cromwell spam. Support tab is great. You get lots of Cromwell 6. You can get up to three cards. We're only taking two here to the Vickers and the Bedford. The AT tab, six pounders, 17 pounders, Wolverines. Again, I would have brought more 17 pounders if I had realized. Uh, Crusader AA, two Bofors. The RD tab, just some Sextons, and the RD tab, uh, leader. I don't find the Artie to be overwhelming in this division. And then we have some Tempest, Tempest Rockets, and Mitchell 2 Bomber in the air tab. So, we're off. Sorry, I'm zooming in to make sure I can hear stuff. Okay, good. Sorry, working through another sickness. I will do my best not to sniffle, but eh, there's a good chance. So, in we go. I did know I definitely had the uh, the speed advantage here at the beginning. No question of that for sure. So, definitely helpful there. Jeeps, willy jeeps are great. Sorry, I'm raising my desk. Not sure if you'll hear anything. Probably not, but up we go, nice and slow. All right, so early positions taken up north. Cromwell 6 immediately in to start securing that area there. Now, despite the Bren not being great still, I mean, even despite the buff, the Bren is still nothing impressive. The problem with the Bren continues to be that it just does not lay down enough suppression, and therefore it loses most long-range fights. But against the Lofoff Jaegers, they, they do win. They can win that fight. Early just field engineers for me. These Sturm Pioneers are actually really solid. They're just a chunky, like, they're, they're just a tongue, uh, chunky Flamer Squad. Basically similar to the Assault Engineers, but these guys come with Disheartened, which does suck. 
I do not like disheartened on CQC units. Koenig's Tiger in. Again, did not expect this because I did not think I was playing against this division, but we do see a nice early Koenig's Tiger. And truthfully, the 17 pounders can deal with this. It's the P variant, so it's got 180 millimeters of armor, which means there is a pen chance. Not at max range, but there is a pen chance there at closer ranges. Crusader AA, I'm using to more aggressively push forward and grab some ground here. Cromwell 5 leader in. One thing you are short on, you really can't get infantry leaders in here. There's really not enough room in the infantry tab. So some early good grabs here for me. Protoss is a bit out of practice. This is not his game these days. Warno is his thing. Cromwell 6 did stay alive from the Kinnick's Tiger here. That was hunting for it. Here's the Flak Panzer Brenz. Kind of just wrecking me right now. It just wrecks my stinking... Uh, my... my my uh, scouts here. Being only 20 points for a 20 mil is actually pretty nuts. Comes with armor, so you can't just shoot at it. So it's, it's a very good unit for 20 points. And y'all know I'm not a huge fan of 20 mils, but honestly, on a, on a 20 point rig, then they're worth it. Like if 20 mils were only 20 points, then yes, they would 100% be worth it. So here comes the Tempest. Honestly, I kind of forgot these were actual flat guns. I just kind of thought they were like Bren carrying <laughs> like trucks. I don't know. I, I just didn't. I wasn't registering what these did exactly. <laughs> Was able to take out the Luftwaffe Jaeger. Little uh, cheeky line of sight there. As the Brens just continue to annihilate me here. But making good progress down south. Again, I just, I think 16th looks like an absolute trash division. <laughs> really, for 1v1. Again, for 10v10, it looks great. You get great arty. You have, um, obviously, King Tigers, which makes any division good in 10v10. Field Engineer is going to toss that grenade. This is a good fight for them. The grenade will immediately pin these Luftwaffe Jaegers and cause them to surrender if there's not a leader around. Actually, it didn't, it didn't pin them. I'm kind of surprised. There we go. They won't surrender because of the leader, but eh, it is what it is. So I accept that I'm, there's no way I'm holding these flags out here. Again, I just don't. I don't even have 17 pounders still B phase. My Firefly has no chance against the Skinnick Tiger. Uh, so no reason to be going nuts there. And he's just kind of blobbing disheartened infantry at me. That's kind of the way to play this division. I mean, you get like 100-some infantry easy in the, the infantry tab. So, yeah, the best way is to just blob them out. The English, on the other hand, you got to be a little bit more purposeful with them. But it is nice having these double vet rifles. Um, now, they are single vet, technically. Uh, but they come in single vet with nine, which which is nice. Like, honestly, it is really nice. But the double, the extra veterancy that we're seeing in this division, 7th, and in 2nd Panzer, has not represented the absolute insanity I expected it to. I mean, truthfully, it's one of those things, if you make the argument, would Commonwealth divisions be way better if they had one free vet? Probably not. And that's the argument right here. Like, are rifles piot suddenly good if you give them a free vet? The answer is no. Like, that's, that's the straight, narrow answer to it. And it's the same with, like, um... It's the same with 2nd Panzer. If all it took were, were for Panzer Divisions to be good was to have a bunch of veterancy, then people would just vet them up and play Vanguard or Maverick, and they would win all the time. But that isn't what happens, because Panzer Divisions aren't that crazy good at the end of the day. So giving them free veterancy doesn't actually break them the way you might first expect when you see it on paper. It's like, oh my god. Tempest coming in here to try to pin some infantry down. Should be very effective, of course, against these disheartened infantry. Field Engineers should be flying in here. Unfortunately, not a full pin on these Luftwaffe Pioneers, which are a nice unit. I think they're only 20 points. Yeah, I mean, that's great. Unfortunately, he does get the retreat. Now, he still takes a good bit of damage because, remember, the fallback nerf here has reduced the damage reduction pretty significantly. It makes Pioneers a lot more playable. I'm a big fan of that. I, I am going to reassess whether I'll be bringing more Pioneer units and uh, Sapity and uh, Engineer units into, the, into my decks. Because now we see a little bit more reason to bring them because you can't just like retreat, dodge the grenade. So yeah, the blob is just hard to push through. And of course, I have all my flamer units in B and C, so I got to kind of survive for the moment. Vickers getting some cheeky lines of sight here. Scouts continue to spot for me. Cromwell in a spot that could see them. Luckily, my Vickers is going to do the job for me, though. It's a little... This little bastard's doing everything right now. It's Vickers go. Cromwell 4 in to help, you know, use take advantage of some of these weird line of sights on the hill to force these infantry back a little bit. Now, truthfully, these would have been seen, like, they, this should pop out right here. But, of course, again, because of just the weird Tannenberg line of sights. Which they never and will never fix. <laughs> like, just except now. 
was able to grab this flag down here and bring it back to a 12 12. Of course, a phase is his stronger uh, income here for him. C phase, the five point difference is negligible. There's like really no difference. Cromwell versus Stug 3 F8 should be okay. It's only got 70 millimeters of armor, but unfortunately, bounce and a death. These Stug F8s, a better fight for me than normal Stug Gs, of course. Lower armor on them. Four rifles, Piat. They have no chance. Infantry getting forced off. Protoss getting a little too close to the woods here. But we can see again the issue with these just blob disheartened infantry. They do all run away. <laughs> they they are not. Uh, they don't exactly hold their own. Does already have a commandant out, getting lots of that double and triple star bet on them though. And there's something to be said for a bunch of double and triple star units. They they do a lot even if they're disheartened. Cromwell 6 now getting a nice line of sight here on this Luftwaffe Jaeger, being able to push them back nicely. And even while they're falling back, we can see how much damage they'll still take from this Cromwell 6. We'll check it out here. See this fallback nerf in full action here. Still takes the damage. Bef before, that probably would have done nothing. I do think it kind of missed, too. Let's see if we can get another hit on here before they get out of line of sight. We do. And... Yeah, you see how they actually took two damage? That would have never happened before. It's still the right choice to fall back 9 out of 10 times, but there's definitely a little more reason maybe not to all the time immediately. Got his FK-288s in, nice and close. Getting that close support already. Vickers trying to hold off these Lufthop Jaegers, but the 88 is proving a problem. Cromwell 6 though, caught cutting off that reinforcement route nicely. The bunch of Cromwell 6s is, is really nice. Like, this division has a lot of 2K in it. You got tons of 2K HE, you got tons of 2K AT. In that respect, it's a really nice, well-balanced division that way. I mean, truthfully, it, it, it's a well-balanced division overall. You really don't have any weaknesses. You have solid recon tab for sure with the scouts. Your infantry tab is honestly pretty solid. Your tank tab is good. Like, it, you got Cromwells and Fireflies, which, you know, are not the best tanks in the game, but certainly are functionable by n no stretch would I call them infunctionable. Um, bomber finally coming in here. I'm not a fan of the four 50 kilogram bombs. I just don't think they do enough. Uh, this one does kill, but Tempest straight on the BF-109. Yeah, that was a bad choice there by Protoss. He definitely loses that every time with their four 20 mils. Cromwell does find the kill in the Luftwaffe Jaegers. Gonna go recapture this. Still 59, though. His V for victory proving to be annoying. And this Bren thing, this Black Panzer Gren just wrecking me over here. These are, these were so good. Do a Firefly in now. About to hit B phase, which means I get some flamer infantry, which means I can finally fight back here in the woods more effectively. Problem is I don't know where they are exactly, so dropping two 100-some kilogram bombs doesn't do a lot here. Crusader AA showing why it's such a good support weapon. Got a little, little punchy here. Not sure what I was thinking. Lucky for me, he missed, which does give me the opportunity to run away. The great thing about Crusader AAs is they can take two hits. They have tank health. They medium tank health. Now, double Sexton in. Going after those 88s. Got to take out some of this 2K. The funny thing is, 16th does have some good 2K assets in general. It does not have any HE, and that's the big issue. It's got no 2K HE, but it's got lots of 2K AT. So it does well at killing armored targets at range. Sexton's going to work. These things are great for their ammo capacity of anything else. And truly, they fire pretty quick at a nice eight rounds a minute here. Technically, they have AP shells too. Not that I would ever use them that way, but they do. There's no getting around the fact they do. It's not heat though. Be aware, it is AP. He already is proving effective. I'm surprised Protoss didn't push more here. I have set up a six pounder so that if he gets too cheeky, I can take it out. Now we're in B phase though. Now here comes the assault engineers and mass along with 17 pounders eventually. As this Cromwell 6 does lots of work here. 
These 88s have a higher rate of fire than the normal ones, so they're just very good. Also, a new model for them. It's pretty cool looking. Let's check out this rate of fire really quick. Ah, he's still falling back. Bren, my god, this thing. Just gross. 17 pounder in. Trying to take out my rifles Piat, but they survive. Here comes the uh, King Tiger Knispel here. So his second and final King Tiger. Sexton's going after the 17 pounder. Assault Engineer Blob has arrived. I'm waiting for the leader though. I want to maximize their effectiveness. Still 1410 for him. Now this is where of course he falls behind income wise because of his lower B phase income. But yeah, I mean so far the division is functioning well. 16th uh, Luftwaffe giving a good showing for itself to be sure. There's enough heavy armor to block out open areas and you kind of just spam anywhere you need to get through. Now here's the issue with Assault Engineers, they just don't put out that much damage. Now it's nice having the double Bren, that definitely does some work, but they don't really put out a ton of damage, they're not wiping things out. You gotta like, you gotta chew through the forces slowly. Texans did manage to finish off the 88 down here. Here's another one, let's check out this rate of fire, so 16 rounds a minute. Oh, it's 12 on the APHE, but it's a much higher penetration at 220 millimeters of penetration. So this thing can kill anything in the game pretty effectively. Only 8 damage, so it does take 2 pens, but very effective otherwise. Kind of what you always wanted the normal 88 to be. Like, this is what you always want 88s to be. In terms of AT. Now, we do see ammo coming in, more fusiliers. I decided to counter battery this FK-288, which I can see because of my scouts in here, or it's maybe one of these guys. As I carve through the woods here, unfortunately my leader has fallen behind. The thing is, once you get this leader in here, the Luftwaffe Jäger Fjör gets rid of the disheartened trait, which then, you know, makes these guys basically normal infantry, so that's not bad. Technically very good. So there you see the discipline trade on these. 17 pounder taking a pot shot here. I'm annoyed to find it's still alive. Crusader AA doing what it does. Cutting down some infantry. We can see how much damage this still does. So yeah, like his better choice would have actually just been to click out instead of fall back. Because it fall back you don't have a control where it goes. Clicking back you might be able to control where well you can control where it goes for the most part. He's doing a bit of counter battery here on my Sextons, which are doing some good work. 17 pounder still alive though. Now going to finish that off. Finally killed the Flakpanzer Bren over here. God, that thing was annoying. With that dead though, my assault engineers can now push across the open. As my infantry continue to stack up well, and again, I don't think this this is really not an argument for like, oh, Commonwealth Division are really good infantry now. Um, I think it's just simply they stack up well in this situation. So things a little static now. 17 pounder is in. Picking off these flak pens or brens because he didn't notice that it was there. So yay, 17 pounder. Good job. This King Tiger is now hidden away. Tempest finding a pack 38 for free. Very nice. As the assault engineers are now in and can pressure this flag again. Still 1311 him though. But my B phase advantage is starting to show. Unfortunately, my artillery commander getting a little too cheeky, and I lost a whole bunch of assault engineers here. Just an overwhelming number of pioneers and uh, Sherman pioneers. But the thing is, he's going to run out of those. Like, he only brought him an A, so once those are out, there is no more. But the triple starriness, definitely doing some work, along with the discipline getting rid of the disheartened trait, means these guys function like normal infantry. They don't build up 
Uh, suppression is fast. You can see it's small bits going on here. And all of a sudden, this division really hums. If you can keep leaders going, it's very good. More Assault Engineers coming in. Luckily, again, I set that C-Phase card up. So there should be plenty of those to come. The tough thing for blue is after these two flags, there's really nowhere else to go. Like, yeah, you could push all the way here, but that is a long way to go. It's really tough to hold. You know, any AT here blocks off the reinforcement route. So, I mean, he's basically got the two flags he's going to get there. Snuck this Cromwell 4 around the corner here. Staying out of Knispel's line of sight, but it does allow me to force off these infantry here. And the Cro Firefly is here as well. Cromwell 6 did go down to the King Tiger, unfortunately. Got three Sextons going now, going after the Flak 43. My Assault Engineers go down, though. Not good. Stug 3, bouncing the 6-pounder, stays alive. I like 6-pounders, but they can be a bit unreliable at range. Sextons fantastic when they're in radio range. They can absolutely eviscerate stuff. It's 25 pounders, very good with radio. Now, my argument is always nearly every RD piece is really good with radio, but these units at their price and stuff feel very good with radio, like very, very good with radio. Firefly wasn't paying attention, has really no chance against Knispel here, especially with him double vet, giving a nice uh, probably seven rounds a minute here. Oop, finally took a hit. And down I'll go. Was not paying attention. Another fresh blob of salt engineers coming in. We see a Nebelwerfer for 210 coming in. We'll see soon that that punishes me dearly. Finally overwhelming some of these infantry here. Still losing a lot though. Almost moved the arty leader right next to these guys. Trying to stay on top of them. Again, they take way more damage now while running away, so there's a lot of reason to keep after infantry now. Before, it was just like, well, it won't do much anyway, but now you want to get after them. You can still apply a lot of damage to units. Now he's just using Flammenwerfers in here as the last of his Sturm Pioneers die off. About to hit C phase. I'm about to get a fresh card of Assault Engineers. Nice little Luftwaffe Fusiliers. They're not great. They have a Faust Patron, which is not a good AT weapon, but it is an AT weapon nonetheless. And for 20 points with an MG42, technically it's very good. Rate. It's a very good rate. With the 88 here, it's going to be hard to get planes through. That's the issue. Going after that FK288 again. Cromwell up against the Stug. Oh no, just kidding, he was shooting some infantry. Finally, almost have these Sherm Pioneers dead, but still they hold on. Rifles Piot moving in. They're not great at CQC, but the Bredens do shoot, so it's something. Big hits there on the FK-288, but now the Nebelwerf are going to go in. And unfortunately, these do have a pretty long barrage time, and the 210 aims up really quick. And we're going to see just how devastating these are. I do think the 210s are a pretty good step up from the 150s. One less rocket doesn't make a whole lot of difference here. Just wrecked. Yeah, that one hurt. I was not very pleased with that. Artillery leader still alive. Salt engineers push through Cromwell, seeing some things on the hill. We're now into C phase, though. It's still 1311 him. Supply was coming in for the Sextons. Of course, most of them are dead. Sherm Pioneer does go down. One more of those left. Flammenwerfer gets caught out. It's not good for him. He really needs every unit that shoots flames. As another wave of flum, uh, assault engineers come in and he just does not have any more CQZ. And that's, got, that's a big issue with 16th. I mean, yeah, say what you want about the infantry being meh all around. 
But the real, real issue is, again, when you run out of CQC. It just gets really hard from that point forward to do anything in the woods, other than spam like 20 Luftwaffe units. Another 210 now, going for the 6-pounder. Will it get the kill? Falling back is pretty ineffective against Neville Werfers now because you just don't have much reduction in damage. Did survive that one, though. I still think two of them is the way to go. I mean, these hits on the Sexton were huge, but I don't think that's the norm. Although maybe late in the game will be proven otherwise. I continue to take a bleed, but I know that I just need to clear this out. Got more sex things coming in. Cromwell 6 again going for the clear out here. And I should be, I'm going to win the wood fight. I, I know that for sure. Like the woods are going to be mine eventually. So I just got to hold off against the open ground. Tempest coming in. 88 died, so there's no AA here. Easy fallback. No leader here to stop these guys. 210. Weird shot here on the rifle's Piot. Seems like a very low value target. Does it hit the Cromwell though? Okay, just kidding. Kills them both. Again, 210. Showing its stuff here. As Protoss's Flammenwerfer squads are on the run here. They, of course, should have zero chance against actual full triple star assault engineers here as I do finally have a commander in getting my beautiful triple star tiger coming in tigger tiger coming already hitting my rifles pee up but not enough to stop me and now it's finally at 12 12 again Lafaf Jaeger Fuhrer taking a bunch of damage here Taking that out is huge because, again, it gets rid of the discipline trait on all these infantry, along with, of course, the veterancy. But in this division, even more so, it's getting rid of that discipline trait. Six-pounder in APCR range, which means it should be a pen every time, and the Stug 3 goes down. Seventeen-pounder fighting Knispel over here. Municipal shown some side armor, gets a penetration. Here comes the Tempest to do a rocket run on it. There was no AA last time I flew here, so here comes the Tempest. Municipal's on the run. Rockets away. Not enough. The heavy uh, health, heavy tank health, keeping this thing alive. Try to do a BF-109 run on it. Would not suggest, usually speaking. 172 now in. Sexton's renewing their deadly work here on the 88 up north. As assault pioneers continue to just chop down these infantry. Now 1311 for me. Another Nebelver first strike takes out two more Sextons. Ouch. Another frustrating loss. Temp is unable to kill off this tiger this king tiger. Kind of frustrating. Because this thing should be pretty darn weakened. After getting penned by the 17 pounder and two Tempest strikes. Now obviously it's HE, but still. This Tempest going for the gun run on the FK-288 that I can still see for some reason. Probably the scouts in the church tower would be my guess. Because I've seen it the whole game. 88 with its suppression is having a hard time getting a shot on target on this Tempest. Does, but a little too late. FK-288 goes down. Tempest forced off by the Flak-43. Might lose this one flying straight over this Flak-43. The loss of all those sex didn't really hurt me. I only have six to start. And his arty is uh, respectable with the big guns and the Neville Werfers. But now, the force of my CQC ness overwhelming a bit. Tiger's in, though. Do have some half tracks on my desert rats here. The new desert rat unit with their triple Bren. They have a gammon anti tank grenade, three rifles, and two Thompsons. It is a small squad. The eight men does suck for 30 points. That's a little rough, not gonna lie. I find eight men squads to just be so soft. 
Like, just so very soft compared to 10. And especially, of course, compared to, like, 12. For some reason, 8 just feels like it dies so fast. Trying to sneak a rifle's piot out here. Lufthoff Jaeger is here, though. Six, Cromwell 6, though, might be able to do something about it. Nice thing is with these assault engineers, they are still okay at long range. I mean, they're double Bren with nine rifles. They do as much as a rifle Piot does, except they have a flamethrower. And they happen to still have a Piot. I mean, this is just a fantastic unit for this division. No question, best one in the division. The Desert Rats are neat, but they're not actually, like, super flexible or super duper good. But these assault engineers are pretty great. I mean, they're just upgrading rifles Piot. And, yeah, they are 35 points. I mean, they're expensive. Tempest going to take out that Luftwaffe Jaeger. Does succeed. Should relieve the pressure on this flag. As he continues to sneak Luftwaffe Jaegers out here, but the Cromwell 6 is here. Never fear. Firefly now covering the road. Another Sexton coming in. That's my last Sexton after losing four others. Yeah, not my best moment. Didn't know I almost got the Commandant out here. That would have been nice. Unfortunately, the Commandant does not give the Discipline trait, so these Luftwaffe areas are still taking the normal disheartened amount of suppression. And when you don't have one of those leaders around, it is very noticeable. And the uh, fallback nerf definitely hurts disheartened infantry a lot. You're punished a whole lot more, try like, automatically running away. Vickers finding a pack 38 for free. So Cromwell 5 stays in defense position. Assault engineers fanning out in the woods here as more of these freaking flak pens or brens coming in. 88. I'm not sure what it was shooting, honestly. Oh, something in the town. Rifles Piat. 17 pounder coming in to try to take out this tiger here. Sexton going after the 88. Yeah, I definitely need those dead. I'm a little bit more cautious now. I'm moving them after only a couple shots. Instead of waiting for the whole barrage. Neville Werfer does some pinning. Found the pack 38 though for free. Some good hits there on the 88. 172 activating, going after the Sextons now as well. Tigers have to be careful though. They do not match up great against 17 pounders. So, in other words, the Firefly can trade up to them really well. They're 20 points cheaper. Um, you know, obviously the Tiger can kill the Firefly just fine. But the Firefly has plenty of opportunity to kill the Tiger. 88 almost dead to the Sextons already. Tiger getting in close and personal. Took a penetration from probably the 6-pounder on the side armor. This is back to 12-12 as Protoss fights back hard. Fortunately, my Cromwell did die. Sad face. Canispel found him at some point. 17 pounder moving back into position to cut off this reinforcement road. Cromwell 6 just being the most annoying thing in that position. Now Warford looking to clear out these infantry here. Cromwell 5, not even sure. Oh, the Stug 3 over here. Some more infantry just piling on in now. Sensing weakness in the center as I suspected eventually I would. 2 star 17 pounder though. Easily cleans up the Tiger. Already moved, so the already dropping harmlessly. Cromwell 6 have so much ammo, too, so, like, you can literally sit here and just do this all day. Picking up another 13-11 here with this flag in the center. And again, like I said, I mean, 7th Armored feels very strong. 88 goes down. You, you have all the tools you really need. You have... I, I wouldn't call it great CQC, but you do have plenty of CQC, especially if you go BC with your Assault Engineers. Like, I have as many as I could possibly need in this game. Um, tack on to that Assault Engineers, the little, like, Suicide Squad guys, and you do have some capable CQC. Now, is it, like, life-changingly powerful? No. But is it very capable against a division that is lacking in some CQC? Absolutely. Look at these freaking Brens. Insta-wreck this Assault Engineer. Oof. As the Cromwell 5 rushes forward to try to stop the madness. 13-11, though. Slow grind down. 50 minute time limit, but that's all I need. Now the Cromwells have arrived. Now he does have the Flakkampftruppen with their 
Panzer Shreks, but I haven't seen any of those, actually. Weirdly enough. They're not a very good squad infantry, anti-infantry wise, but of course they do have a Panzer Shrek. As my armor has now arrived. A little short on leaders, though. Killing off these Brens is what I want. And yeah, you can see with no leader, these guys just like insta route. It's not, they're not very good. Focker Wolf, though. F8 coming in with its clusters. Let's see how it does. Easy kill there. Whoa. DO217 hiding up there, too. Absolutely just crushes this push. And I'm a very sad panda. Six pounder, no chance of t penning this tiger at maximum range here. The Sextons go after this Flak 43, try to open the air back up to the Tempest. As the Brens move in and absolutely just wreck me. Oh, that hurt. Very nice play by him. Is now a Wolverine coming in. These are perfect for these tight areas uh, where I can trade up to a Tiger. Now, Wolverines do have a pretty slow turning radius, I believe. Turret turn speed. I, I believe it's pretty slow. So in that respect, they're not great. But in terms of trading up to a Tiger in this tight area, fantastic. You know, get to that sub 500 meter range. And you're, you're going to pen pretty often. Not consistently every time, but eh, 5 out of 10 times. A little more. 6 out of 10. Neville Werfer going after the Sexton. Sexton's already on the move. Eee! This time managing to dodge. Would have been devastating because my Sexton's are doing a lot of work. There's reinforcements now coming. This time I'm bringing AA to cover this push. Don't really want to get wiped out a second time. Still in just the right spot that I can't get a line of sight on it. Normally this would be a bad fight, but I'm pretty sure the Assault Engineer should win this easy. Especially if he comes at him one at a time. Seven Team Pounder now coming in. Obviously a lot more dangerous for that Tiger. Back to a 12-12 though. Rommel 6 spotting the Luftwaffe Jaeger pushing forward, trying to assert a little more control over this. I, on the other hand, want to start sneaking some sort of rifles piot or something out there. Koenig's Tiger coming back now to assert dominance out here. Crusader coming in to do its deadly work. You can see a lot of damage still going on in these infantry. Love the fallback change, I really do. I know I've said it several times, but it's worth repeating. Oh no, the Fusilier has a Faust Patron. But it didn't die because awkward eight damage. Does reload really fast. Ah. Unfortunately, it keeps popping in and out, so my guys never actually shoot. 17 pounder working its way down the road here. Tiger is easy pickings. His own Neville Werfer pinning his Fusilier down. Unfortunately, he rushed some flock comes swooping in and kills all these tanks. So, a little overly aggressive by me. Punished. It is what it is. Salt Engineers killed off these Luftwaffe Jaegers, but unfortunately, now been surrounded. Tiger going to go down to the 17 pounder here. I would think. Nope, just kidding. Why would it do that? Half track goes down to the tiger. Wolverine? No. Back to a 12 12. The thing is, too, though, he is eating through infantry a whole lot faster than me. My infantry at the top are 35, 35 points for the assault engineers and the desert rats coming with their half track. So I'm chewing through infantry a lot slower than him. Well, he has to deploy two to three squads to counter every one of mine.
Desert Rat's not ideal in CQC, but three Brens does put down some suppression. There's no question of that. Leader goes down, and that just cuts the efficiency of these units in, like, not even half, like, down to a quarter of what they were. Nellowerfer gets a nice kill on the Cromwell 5 leader. Kind of annoying. That was giving me radio, most importantly, for my Sexton's. Sexton's going back after this 88, but there is some radio here, probably from the artillery commander. Yep, just in range. The King Tiger here died to the 17 pounder. We can see lots of side armor there, and the 17 pounder took full advantage of that. So big kill there for me, because I really have no other way to deal with them. Side shots are basically it. Bombing them to oblivion is the other option that's time consuming and resource intensive. I really wish I had more Sextons left. Bofors now coming in. I'm getting kind of annoyed at these random DO 217s and Focke Wolfs and such. I have plenty of points lying around. There's no reason to not just get them out there. Artillery strike here is going to hurt hard. It's going to hit right on that artillery leader. Down he immediately goes. Two tens proven to be extremely effective. Ammo's lasting pretty long in them, too. They're getting six, seven strikes out of them, so no complaints there. Cromwell 6 continues to just be an absolute kick in the balls for him. More assault engineers coming in, along with some more leaders. Like I said, when you get 18 of them in C, you do have some longevity in terms of fighting in the woods. And again, it's not that this is a great CQC unit. It's just that you get a lot of availability. You get free veterancy on it. It's a straight-up infantry squad otherwise. Against any division that doesn't have, like, legit CQC, it's very good. Like, if all you're up against the Sturm Pioneers or... Like, maybe Avtos, you can do pretty well. Like I said, much more careful about moving Sextons now. Here comes the Rifles Piat to try to contest this flag a little better. The scouts still give me lots of precious information. Unfortunately, Cromwell 6 did go down. Black Comp Trooper, though, small squads, only eight men. Not a great machine gun. Tempest coming in to take out that Luftwaffe Jaeger. Does get the shot off. This is what I do like about rocket planes, is that you can beat out AA getting there first. And at this point, the majority of his infantry are being forced to be thrown into the woods just to counter mine. This flag is not easy to cap. It's very far in there. I already have this one. So really, the fight for me is in the middle. Bofors are now here, triple star. So this BF-109 is not long for this world. Easy kill there. Tempest came in to do fighter duty. Immediately pulled that off. DO-217 stopped. Crusader A, Bofors doing the work, but the airstrike is real. Not sure why I picked the six pounder of all things to go after, but Focke Wolf forced off. Other Focke Wolf not forced off in time. Gets some and forces the Crusader AA off. Tempest, though, gonna get on the back of that Focke Wolf, takes that down. Wolverine's dead. Ouch. So my AA buff was not enough. Firefly poking at the 88, 88 poking at the Firefly. Firefly lands a good hit, though, and I do fall back. Eighty-eight under Sexton pressure again. So he pushes the infantry up to more securely grab these. But it's thirteen eleven with me in the center here. Just a weird like what?
17 pounder down the road on this tiger. Tigger, tiger, tiger, tigger. Ha cha! And it misses. There's a shock. Firefly picking on this fusilier now. Finally finishing off these infantry in here. There's nothing to stop me now. For some reason they're not surrendering though? A little confused. There we go. So I now finally have the lead. Little flank move down here. Not good enough though with my Cromwell still hanging out. Pack 40 not get far enough over to see it. Questionable line of sight, I agree. Firefly versus the tiger here. Not going great for me. Missed twice. Decide to break off the engagement. Sexton's still doing their beautiful work on these 88s. Very important to knock these out. They are very solid. More fireflies coming in to take out these tigers. Two ten going after the six pounder. Very odd choice, honestly. I'm surprised you didn't go after the seventeen pounder. An easy kill for the two ten, but not sure if that was the big deal there. Rifles Piot pushed up. No chance, unfortunately. And for some reason, he stopped calling in leaders. I don't know if he l used them all. I mean, it's possible. We've seen several of them. Got one here, here, up here. He lost at least two or three in the middle, so it is possible he's run out. That is not beyond possibility. Vickers finally finding that 88 there. Let's see if the Vickers, triple star Vickers, can do the job. Yes. Go, Vickers, go. 17 pounder taking some arty to the face. Ouchies. As I push back onto this flag, these flak puns of Brendan still here, though. Oof. BF109 coming. That's going to be another sacrifice to my 40 mils when it flies over. And with the smaller bomb loadout, it can't suppress them all. Here goes my Air Force now. Tempest going for these infantry here. As my bombers go everywhere and Protoss throws in the towel with my, the... Show of force, tour de force in the air there. 40 minute, 44 minutes and 15 seconds, 3,310 to 2,930. Honestly, two good showings from both these divisions. I would say Tannenberg not the best map for 16th. No, yeah, 16th. But it's not the worst either. The King Tigers can definitely actually be used here, which is nice. You do run out of CQC for the middle, though, and that's definitely a problem. Uh, for 7th, I think it's a pretty good map for them. They have CQC to fight in the middle. Uh, they have all that 2K stuff to play on the sides. Uh, it's a pretty solid division for this. I like 7th. I do think it's one of the better allied divisions coming in this DLC for sure. 16th, I don't think it's super good. It's a 10v10 gem to be sure, but not much in the 1v1 space. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the Patreon link down below. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.